Hello, welcome. Come on in. Welcome to Royal Black and Elite. We're going to have a great show today, guys. Listen, I have a great story about the daughter of the second president of Angola. She was a businesswoman, and Forbes called her one of the wealthiest women in Africa. She allegedly owned a controlling interest in over 400 companies across Angola and Portugal. Her estimated wealth was around $3 billion or more. But it all came crashing down in 2018 when how she gained her wealth came under scrutiny, leading to her downfall. I want to thank you all for joining me as we learn more about Isabel Dos Santos on today's episode of Royal Black and elite. I want to thank you all for joining me. Thank you to my subscribers. I'm Lady Trinette Wilson and I am an etiquette professional and a social historian. And listen y'all, we are on our way to a thousand subscribers and I want to thank everybody for subscribing and just loving Royal Black and Elite. And listen y'all, big news. I wrote a book. It's called 100 Etiquette Rules for Everyday Success. And it was released, and I went number one on Amazon. Celebration time. <laughs> I'm so excited. Y'all, thank y'all. I can't thank my subscribers enough. If you haven't had a chance to go out and buy the book, definitely go do it. Here's, I left a link down below. So, enough of all of that. Thank you again. Let's get into our, today, our story in today's episode. So, today's show has it all. It has fraud. It has uh, unaliving. It has scandal. So Isabel's life was very, very interesting. And it all began on April the 20th, 1973. She was born in the Soviet Socialist Republic. And so she was actually a half Russian and half African. Her father was President Jose Eduardo dos Santos. And he was the president and also dictator of Angola from 1979 to 2017. Her mother's name was Tatiana Kokonova. And as you see here, she was a Russian woman. This is when she was younger. And as she aged, and here she is with Isabella and her husband and her child. And so she had a family. She knew who her family was. Now, Angola at the time was in the middle of a civil war. And it was very violent. Um, they had been under the rule for the, from the Portuguese for many, many years. The Portuguese had colonized Angola. And in fact, the, the language, the official language of Angola at that time was Portuguese. So that just lets you know how much Portugal owned um, Angola. And really, it's a great story a name of a woman named Queen Nzinga. And it talks about how long she fought against the Portuguese from colonizing Angola. The fight, the, she lost the fight, but um, she did fight against them over 20 years. Great story. So be sure to click here. I'll leave a link in the description. So they colonized and after they colonized and they were freed, then the Angolans began to fight. So step on the scene in 1979, Isabel's father. And he he was a president for almost 38 years. And under his rule, great corruption took place. And after he left, the great corruption was found out that it was amongst his family members. All of them benefited from him being the president. So now let's get back to Isabella. So Isabella uh, was educated in London. So she was raised in London. So, you know, our parents had to have some money because she attended Coben Hall and it was a school. It was a boarding school for girls 7 to 11 years old. And that was in London. And then from 11 to 18 years old, she went to St. Paul's Girls School. And it was a private school for girls from 11 to 18 years old. Once she finished her primary training and schooling, she went on to college to um, at the Queens College, where she majored in electrical engineering. So she was a very smart woman. She met her husband at Queens College as well. His name is Sindike Ducolo, and his father was a millionaire. And so together, this powerhouse came together, and immediately she began to thrive in the business sector. Now, it's reported Isabella had investments in Angola and Portugal in the telecommunications industry, in diamonds, in oil, and trucking, in energy, and in retail. 
The only problem is, supposedly, all of these investments that she had and made were from the government. Reportedly, her father was giving her favorable contracts um, and in money to invest in these businesses. And boy, did she invest. They said this is her $20 million home in London. And her and her, she and her husband were living high on the hall. I mean, look out, they're going to a gala there. So she had extensive investments in property. She also had extensive in, um, investments all across the world. So it wasn't just in, uh, you know, in Angola. It was in Portugal, London, all over the world. They said she had a, a jet a private jet, of course, if you're having that kind of money, of course you do. Um, and then a $29 million yacht. Now, never did she think she would fall the way she did living at a level like this. Y'all, she was hanging out with the star. Here, look at she here. She is with Paris Hilton. She's also here with Chris Rock. We hadn't even seen Chris Rock since that movie many, many years ago. But yet, he was hanging here with Isabella. Look at this. Miss Heard, you know, Amber was all in the news uh, this summer with Johnny. And then we have Gary Dorton. He was on CSI for a long time. So she was really around really famous people. Look at her here with Mariah Carey. I mean, this woman has some juice and some money. I mean, being worth almost $4, um, $4 billion. Here she is with Nicki Minaj. So she really had an extensive star circle. And even here with Weinstein. That should have been an indication because soon after her, her father left office in 2018, when the new Angolan government took over, scandal. I mean, everything started coming out. Her face hit the news. Stories started coming out about how she actually made her money. And not after, and, and the reason, first of all, the reason they were so mad, let me clear that up, is because the Angolan people were in a recession and they were suffering. And do you know the average um, income then was one to two dollars a day compared to her four billion dollars that she had stolen from that country? So that's why the government allegedly started coming after her. Now, Isabella said, listen. The government is just coming after me. Political witch hunt is all this is. But, you know, things got weird when her banker, her personal wealth manager, uh, ended up unalive in his home. His name was Nuno. I'm not going to try the rest of his name. And then her husband ended up unalive in Dubai in January of 2020 from a drowning incident. So things were getting ugly really fast. And Isabella was straight in the crossfires of all of these investigations. Even though some said her family, other family members were also getting money. It was her and her alone who was standing uh, in all of these investigations, so much so that now Interpol has issued a warrant for her arrest. But before then, Angolia had frozen her bank accounts seized her state and their local companies, and in January 2019, they moved to also seize her assets in Portugal and also stop her from transferring any money to Russia because she was an Angolian and Russian citizen. So by 2021, she had been barred from the U.S., um, and so things have not looked good for Isabel. Right now, she's staying in Dubai, and her story's not over, so we don't know what the end of this story is going to be. I guess it goes without saying, she's no longer on Forbes, and Forbes really has uh, a curse on their list. I'm, You know what, I'm gonna do a story on all the people on Forbes who's had these terrible downfalls, I mean, because they've been awful. And if true, what she did to the Angolian people is really horrible. So as always, that's another great episode of Royal Black and Elite. Don't forget to go pick up my new book, 100 Etiquette Rules for Everyday Success. And as always, I really thank you all for joining me, for being, for riding with the Royals, for all your likes, your shares, your subscribes, and your comments. I love reading your comments. So this is the end. Thank y'all for joining me for another great episode. And I'll see you the next time on the Royal Black and Elite.